The not so live variety here in the low budget live bar and grill here in beautiful southern middle Tennessee. And this is your podcast for Monday, February the 12th. You bunch of freaking low lifers. And if you're wondering, why did I just call you out? Why did I call you a low lifer? Well, then you've never been here before because that's what the listeners of this program refer to themselves as. And I'm a low lifer. We're all united. Living this low life. Uh, welcome. Welcome. It's been a uh, been a crazy, busy, you know, it's always busy. Just the last few years have been busy, and I'm grateful for that. When MPFL got back home, home a couple of days, then the Alabama Bass Trail down at uh, Weetopka, Alabama at Lake Jordan on the Coosa River. Unbelievable event. And in between, I went and got the old Express picked up from the folks at Sonar Pros over in Georgia, Trent Palmer and crew got to see uh, old Austin Felix hanging around over there. He uh, he's he's rigging them out over there right now, getting everybody ready to uh, the the boats that aren't already rigged. We've got a couple tournaments that have already taken place, obviously, but uh, Sonar Pros kicking it out over there, and appreciate Trent. My ride, oh my goodness, gracious, alive. It is, uh, I texted the triple threat and I said, this thing is just bad. Like it's just bad to the bone. I rigged my own boat last year and I immediately regretted that, uh, because I've had like my good, my good buddy, Darren out there in Oklahoma, integrated boat works, another just stone cold killer at rigging boats. People that have a knack for that are incredible, but, but Trent Palmer, you know, Trent's close to me over here in Georgia. He's about uh, four hours from the house over there in Lake Lanier. And he thinks so outside the box on things and has a background in all things wiring and all things electrical and uh, and audio, has an audio background as well. But just, uh, man, you talk to these guys. And look, love it or love it or hate it, if you are listening to this and you are a bass fisherman with a bass boat, electronics are here to stay. And you might as well get the most out of them, right? And so uh, I actually had a call with a friend of mine on Friday driving back from there. And, like, man, it's just complicated. Like, all this stuff is getting so much more complicated, right, wrong, or indifferent. Some of it I don't like. Some of it I don't like. I miss, I do miss, like, an old Minn Kota Maxim trolling motor that I couldn't tear up with a damn anvil. Like, or, I mean, like, uh, with a, I mean, I guess if you threw an anvil at it, you couldn't tear it up. But uh, because I can break anything, I can break an anvil with a rubber hammer, that old saying. But, dude, this newfangled stuff, and I like it. I like it, and I'm running a completely different setup on the boat this year. But, man, we do live in a world where everything is so complicated that installing it yourself, it's like working on your vehicle. Like, things are not like they used to be. <laughs> Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. It is, uh, and I feel like I'm an old man when I talk about this, but dude, things are so much more complicated. So I think for me this year, getting uh, a professional to take care of everything is going to make my life a lot easier. But holy cow, between all the, uh, I mean, dude, I, I'm running a power pole move trolling motor and this thing's got more bells and whistles than a brand new Cadillac. Like it's bananas. 
I would have never known where to start with this stinking thing. And uh, I got to run around during the live coverage to use it a little bit there with ABT yesterday, but uh, on the Coosa River. But man, it's just, uh, I can't imagine taking on that task. And I did last year and it was terrible. My stuff was never right all year long. Hudson and I did it. It was a fun project, but at the end of the day, having so and I ran Trent Sonar Pro's uh, harness last year, which helped, but like it was still my doing. And man, everything is just so clean. Whoever gets my boat that, that that's the next owner of this thing, you're welcome, honestly, because the uh, the setup is absolutely amazing. So, anyways, I'm rambling, but but that's where we're at. Like so many, I made so many jokes at the Alabama Bass Trail meeting. Friday night to anglers like, dude, I do miss that Minn Kota Maxim. There was a, uh, my buddy Lee Means was there from Gorman. He was all set up, people coming up and asking so many questions, obviously. Forward facing, the hot button topic. People want to know, which screen do I need? This, that, and the other. And when you price it, some people go, ooh. And some people go, ooh. You know, the reaction can be different. There's a little bit of difference in, mm, and ooh. Some people back up. And we are in this era of bass fishing. And I know so many people are, are or commenting constantly on it, it's here. And if you are a bass fisherman and you are trying to fish tournaments until something changes, you better get dialed. You better. You better. And uh, we we saw that at the ABT. So so many familiar faces that are Coosa River legends. They're now mixing it in. It's not all they're doing, but they're mixing it in. Then you have so many young anglers dominating. And that's something I want to talk about today with our guests a little bit here in just a minute, but this youth movement is impressive. It is certainly impressive. And you, you know, you look at the tackle warehouse pro circuit invitational former FLW tour, RIP FLW tour out at Sam Rayburn. I've got to, uh, you know, check out the standings and you got guys like that. Alec Mor- Morrison, freak of nature, young guy, Called a share lunker in practice. Drew Gill's a name that just like never goes away. But you see uh, Chris Lane's son, Cal, in the mix. There was a 38-pound stringer waiting. Like, what are we doing? Bass fishing is bananas right now. But it drives people crazy because it's a spinning rod, a jig head, a minner. You got that spunk shed on there, that that freeloader, you know. You throwing them out there, That that's literally all that's going on. And so I think that kind of breeds a negativity too, because I, it does frustrate me that there aren't a lot of uh, groundbreaking techniques, I guess, that we see. It's like kind of the same old, same old every time. Again, I don't care. Let them all take steroids for all I care. Entertain me. Catch giant bass, especially on a spinning rod. That's freaking awesome. But it does get a little redundant. And so I think for the fan base, that's where you see a lot of the frustration. But it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I can tell you right now, I have been uh, a live scope guy since it came out. I had one of the first ones on the Garmin Pro Staff back in the day. And I want to just get better with it because I think it makes you more efficient. And if I'm going to fish any tournaments this year, I think that uh, unless it's banned in the events that I'm planning on being in at some point or another, you better get good with it, you know. And, and I am like the old man, like, rah, when people came across the stage at the Alabama Bass Show, they're like, I caught him on a buzz bait and a jig and a square bill. I'm like, high five. I love that. That's bass fishing to me. But it's changing. Ch-ch-ch-changes. It's happening. It is happening out there. And this youth movement is something we had, I would say, out of the top 12, call it, in the ABT, there were four teams of young men that were less than 19 years old, 20 years old. Second place, two young men. The Krausens, unbelievable, unbelievable, man. You can almost see them coming when they got a bag and you don't even have to ask them because they're so dialed on that. But then sometimes you get tricked, like, well, he swam a jig all day. We well, threw a square bill, we skipped docks. But it's, uh, it's, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild to see what's happening. And I know that we beat this to death in the sport of bass fishing. I get it. I do. But. It's kind of remarkable, this this paradigm shift that we're living. And I think it just, for me, the reason I'm redundant and I talk about it so much is because all these events, whether it's MPFL or the Alabama Bass Trail or events that we're all watching together, like the BPTs and the Elites or the Invitationals, it's just taken over. It was 
like a little bit here and there. And, and now it's just like, it's, it's, it's insane. Still doesn't make them easier, easier to catch still, you know, uh, pisses, pisses people off. Those two things are, uh, are a guarantee does not make you Superman because everybody would be Superman. You got to get dialed on it if you're going to compete and, uh, doesn't make them easy to catch. And then it does piss people off. It is a polarizing topic in the sport. It certainly is. It's uh, only time will tell where we're headed with it. We'll talk to our guests a little bit about that today. Real quick, want to uh, want to thank some folks. And again, real quick, we're going to thank them real quick. I'm going to do the stopwatch trick again. But we've got somebody that's presenting this episode in particular, and they're gonna they're gonna join in and present some episodes. And I, I am grateful that these folks. I've had several conversations with these people in the last few months. And they have very much been a hot button topic. They have been in the sport of bass fishing, and uh, been lots of comments, commentary made their way for and against. And after I spent many, 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 many conversations with these guys, many, and they will tell you, many criticizing, but also educating, asking questions because I did not know what they were about. Did not know, did not know the story. Didn't know the origins. And they're very sharp people. Very sharp people. Uh, but this episode is brought to you by the folks at Fish Tips. That's right. Where to go, what to throw. It is an extension of a fishing guide. He can tell you maybe he's booked up. You got your kids. You're going on a trip. You want to go somewhere. Boom, you get on there. You can buy you a fish tip. You've got pros on there, guides, but it is it is marketed to literally, and I, and I think tournament fishermen as a whole try to gatekeep it a little bit, and I get that, but there are guides. I live on a lake, uh, or live close to a lake that's got 50 guides on it, I feel like. Everything gets fished every single day, over and over and over and over and over. Uh, this is going to help fishermen. It's going to help people, in my opinion. It can help. Guides make a better living. It can help professional anglers make a better living. It can help you if you're on a vacation, not have to go fish with a guide. You can take your kids out in your own boat, which is something I enjoy doing. But from the crappie world to the bass world, across the board, saltwater, they got big plans. They're doing a lot of things, but we appreciate this episode being brought to you by the folks at Fish Tips. It's 47 seconds. Not too bad. Gill fishing. You can get on gillfishing.com and use code LBLGIFT. And once you spend a hundred bucks and you put that code in there, you get a free gift. And right now it's a reversible beanie that will change with the seasons. You bunch of low lifers get on there, get you a Fitzroy down jacket. They're amazing. Look at the rain suits. Look at the boots. Look at the shoes. They got gloves. They got waterproof beanies. They have waterproof socks. Gillfishing.com is where it's at. Use code LBL gift. When you spend a hundred bucks and you do get a gift indeed. Pro Guy Batteries, ProGuideBatteries.com. Been sporting us here for a couple years, and we appreciate the folks at Pro Guide. I got those Pro Guides in that new X21 Pro LE running 236 volt trailer motor batteries. I mean, come on with it. Got a lithium cranking battery to run exclusively, like run my electronics independently. Looking so good. You can use code LBL10 at ProGuideBatteries.com to save money. They have been in the battery business forever. You can trust them. I assure you way more than a lot of these fly by night deals that are out there. ProGuideBatteries.com. Bait-Works.com. Bait-WRX.com. That's the exclusive online home for the LOB power finesse. You can smack my microphone and broke it. Yep, maybe. Maybe not. Finer than frog hair skirt material in seven fish catching colors. Three alt trocar hook. <laughs> my mic is not liking me today. Bait dash wrxtech.com. You can use code Duncan 10 there to save money and let them know you are a low lifer at bait dash works.com. And last but not least, hang the banner. Hang that Bassmaster Classic winning banner. That's right. The original all-welded aluminum bass boat made in Hot Springs, Arkansas, that took a lap in the Bassmaster Classic, the first ever aluminum bass boat to do that. I got that X21 Pro LE 250 Yamaha show, blistering hole shot, amazing, amazing fishing platform, 96-inch beam. 
Go check them out at a dealer. Go check them out at a boat show. You will not be disappointed. Express Boats, building excitement since 1966. All right. I'm going to text our guest right now. He is practicing for an event. Uh, again, I want to say huge shout out to Alabama Bass Trail for having me. For having me. I am enjoying that immensely, just like I enjoy the National Professional Fishing League. I got to see so many old friends of mine, folks that I fished BFLs and Redmans against. When I was a kid, I've known some of these folks since I was 15, 16 years old. Getting to see them on a consistent basis now. We've got the Alabama Bass Trail North kickoff. I know some of y'all that listen to this fish that North Division. So a lot of low lifers come across the stage as well in the South Division. I don't know as many uh, of the bulk of the anglers. we got a lot of new anglers in the South. But I'll be in Florence, Alabama this coming Saturday for the Alabama Bass Trail. If you're around, come say, hey, I'll be uh, up there running my mouth on the stage. Okay, we're going to we're gonna get our guest on the phone. He's on the water, so no video call this week, which I'm totally fine with. I kind of I miss the days sometimes of the phone call here on LBL. On LBL. This man has won $2 million with a rod and reel. $2 million. Let that sink in. $2 million with a rod and reel. He was the 2018 Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year. He was a young gun when he came in. We've got so many young guns, and that's something we're going to talk to him about today. But he was a young gun. He has seven career wins. He is an absolute fantastic guy, fantastic father, and someone that when I have him on the show, I always appreciate our conversation so much. And it's been a while, so we're going to get him on the phone right now. I'm going to say live, but not so live from Gunnersville, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Lucas. What's up? Well, hello, sir. How are you? How are you, buddy? Uh, oh, man, pretty good. I, I am probably not as good as you because I see your pictures nonstop and you're out there steady blasting them on Gunnersville nonstop <laughs> when you're not blasting them on Toledo Bend or blasting them wherever else you go in the country. But uh, the last time, I want to remind you real quick, the last time we did one of these, you were practicing for an event that you then won. So are you fishing the Toyota this week? On I'm Gunners? not. Oh, I'm not. Are we live right we, now? We are recording. We're full bore, oh, bud. Cool. We're full cool. bore. Like we're not style. live. We're we're low. But we're we're not so live. But we are recording. <laughs> I normally <laughs> I say that. You. No, I'm not fishing. Uh, I'm not fishing the Toyota because if you made the final day, you'd miss a practice at Santee Cooper. Oh, I'm okay. Scared. I'm scared of Santee Cooper. I don't. I don't blame you. That is a very scary place in life. Yeah. I, I've been there one time, and I was literally I I hated every second hope because I was terrified. <laughs> That's how I felt. I went and ran around there, and I. What's crazy to me is how long I've been doing this now, and I've never been there. And That's crazy. So That's really crazy to ago. me. Actually, not to, that. That blows my mind. As long never as you've been, been to out Santee there. Cooper, wow. it was one of those things, dude. Like. When I put my boat in the water, it felt like the first time I put my boat in the water, like at Gunnersville or Okeechobee. Yes. I'm like, this is one of those places yes. that it's got bass, it's legendary, it just has that feel, you know. And I know it's not a good numbers place, but the quality of fish in there is really good. You know, there's some big ones in there. Man, talk about that feeling right there, because I said that last week about Okeechobee. We we had MPFL going on at Logan Martin during the Open when Scotty Martin was down there just dropping bags. It was insane. But I, I talked about Okeechobee being one of those places, right, that when your boat comes off the trailer, especially the first time, the nostalgia, the Every story you've ever been told by your buddies that have been there, the tournaments you've watched, the magazine articles you've read, it has this aura about it that the entire time you're there, you do feel it. It's And I know that's, that may be weird for some folks to hear, but you saying that about Santee, it is that, it's that way too. It is this place of bass fishing lore, fortune, and fame, but it's they're also – very intimidating fisheries right where the fish live oh, in very dude. specific areas super intimidating i remember the first time at okeechobee coming i launched in the Kissimmee river and i come out and i hit the mouth of the lake i'm like oh dear god <laughs> like you literally yes. can't see the other side 
I'm yes. like, I think I'll stay close to the bank. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I was like, it was that freaky feeling. Yes. And the same thing at Santee because, you know, it's this legendary place that you hear about people knocking their lower units <laughs> off and the trees, the size of the front deck of the boat, just under the surface. And so it is intimidating, dude. As long as I've been doing this, I'm like, and these places are still intimidating. You know, that that doesn't go away, yes. but it's also fun, you know, because it's like it brings back that adventure side mm-hmm. of that new body of water, like especially when it's historical. It's just really cool, dude. So I'm excited for that tournament. But <laughs> that's why I didn't fish the Toyota, long story <laughs> short, because with two and a half days of practice, I'm like, I need everything I can get at Santee Cooper, dude. No, I, I, cause you guys get what, two days or three days this year? Practice. We, we get two, two and a half, two three, and a half, uh, yeah. two and a half. You still not, it, a, still not a bit, you know, still not a lot of time to break down a fishery. That's two massive lakes combined joined by a Good canal. Guy. It goes by very quick. It, no doubt. And you guys just left one that, in my opinion, I've only been on it a couple times for just brief oh, periods gosh. of time. That is such a daunting task in Toledo Bend. You had a great event there. Uh, but it's one of those fisheries, too, that when the boat slides off the trailer, you're like, what am I getting into right now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much gas am I going to burn today? Yeah. And then you run around the whole lake, you burn all your fuel, and you're like, I didn't really catch much. Like, yes. I just got to – and that's the thing, dude. I got to get to these places and then just find an area I'm comfortable with and treat that like its own little lake. Because yeah. if you, I mean, if you see these, you know, you look at Google Earth and you see the size of Toledo Bay and then Santee, you know, the two lakes. And you, you can't cover that. You can't learn that in two and a half days. No. And so one of my things has always been like, just pick an area, you know, a section and treat it like its own little lake and do the best you can there. And sometimes it pays off where it's the winning area. And, you know, sometimes it pays off where, hey, this was a good area to get paid. Uh, and then sometimes it, it doesn't pay <laughs> off. You, you just straight suck. And you're like, well, I'm not coming back to this area next time we go. <laughs> so, sometimes, sometimes, yeah, mark this off the uh, the old favorites I've had list. i plenty of those, too, dude. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, I did the uh, – so funny, man. You come back and everybody blasts them. And you're like, hey, where were you guys at? That that seemed fun, but I did not find yeah. I did not find the fun this week. Didn't, didn't see any of you guys out there all day. Must be. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> with your – in the wrong section with your crew and i think in any big tournament anymore now i say this a lot but if you're by yourself you're either up by 25 pounds or you are in last place <laughs> seriously i man. mean really you could be around a bunch of guys and you're probably around the check fish but maybe not the winning fish yes that's right and you're you hit it on the head right there like that is <laughs> that is the truth we're all looking for that needle in a haystack right. to be by yourself but at the end of the day, you got to fall back on those areas that, you know, and that's the thing like Toledo Bend, you know, you can do your research and, you know, six mile and housing Mm -hmm. and Indian mounds. Like, okay, this is where a lot of things go down and guaranteed. That's where most of our checks were, you know, were caught. And I don't know where Connell was, uh, you know, like on the final day when he blasts them and wins, but he might've been in that area. You know, you you could absolutely Milliken won that bass open. I heard last year, you know, in the Indian mound. So those areas can win, but no doubt most of the checks 100% came from, you know, that section of the lake. Oh, no doubt so. about it. And you, and you know that going in it and that's what frustrates you on some of these famous popular fishers. Like, you know where it's going to go down, but in, in like deep down inside of you, you go, man, I can find something special. I can right. find something. <laughs> and you keep going. And sometimes you got to fall back. I did that at the Potomac one time, a place near and dear to your heart. For sure, for a big dub up there. But uh, trying to do something different, like a Justin Lucas did, uh, and you pulled out the drop shot that time. It was an amazing event up in D.C. But one time I found, I'll never forget it, man, in uh, in a tour tournament, I found these fish way back in this creek. And I was having a really bad practice on the flats and things and like where everybody was at. Like, I just don't like fishing like that, but you know it goes down that way. It is what oh, it yeah. is. And like, Ruman was straighter, and he's like, dude, we're like – they're going to catch them. I know, I know, I know. But I had a brutal practice, and I caught a five and, like, three or four other really good ones way back in this creek, and there was nobody around. I'm like, dude, this could be really dang good. So I start in there, and there's nobody. And I was super nervous about boat number. I'm like, man, there's no way there's not somebody going to be in there flipping that wood and those docks. And I, and I get up there, and there's nobody. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I kind of got chills. Well, then I caught, like, 15 snakeheads. 
and uh and like a two pounder and then and then like another keeper and then it's like 11 o'clock and you haven't caught another one and you're going nobody's came in there and you're like where's everybody at man yeah and you run back down the river and every community grass bed people are just high-fiving their co-anglers having a great old time because they're Net catching three pounds yeah. and they already got 15 it's so pounds. stupid dude and Gosh. and uh and i'll never forget dudley said it the way and i told him i was like dude this one creek way up here goes ah you got sucked in by the old potomac creek trick did you <laughs> and it was like <laughs> he goes you can't do that duncan and i'm like gum it but it's just you know where it's gonna go down sometimes but you just against better judgment those are, those are very expensive lessons <laughs> yes <too>. they are <laughs> indeed expensive lessons. i ended up uh i made a decent comeback on day two but but still did not get paid because of my day one blunder of just being yeah, a I moron uh i've had I plenty of those but i always like i mean and dude that's like me running an express like i like going way up stuff and like adventures and i had a jet boat when i was a kid like i like to fish that way unfortunately now unless you're john cox or keith poche i feel like that doesn't pay off very often oh dude yeah it's uh i've been telling people i feel like bass fishing's changed more in yes. the last four years three four years you know it's changed more since covid than it did for 25 mm -hmm. 30 years dude it, like there were some little adjustments power poles uh -huh. lock, uh side imaging you know i do think mapping was a big that was a big advancement mm -hmm. in our sport that doesn't get talked about as much Million but percent. man yeah it's it's changed so much now and that's why i've you know you see me posting all the stuff at gunnersville i'm just like dude i'm in, i'm in the weird spot in my career where I'm 37 and I'm halfway through and I'm like, if I want to do this for a few more years, like I cannot get beat by this technology game. I have to embrace it. Uh, cause I'm still all in on fishing, you know, and I still love it, dude. It's, it's awesome when you, when you're in the middle of the moment and you're in competition, even though you're staring at your screen, like it's still a competition and it, that part of it is really fun. Uh, but I was texting Paul and Nick the other day. I'm like, we, I think we were both, I knew he was flying. I was flying somewhere and I texted him and we were talking about forward facing sonar. And then, you know, I was just telling him and I've told other people like, man, I'm so thankful that I got to at least experience it before that. Yes. Because yes. it was, it was a lot of, you know, it's still fun. I love the bass fish. That's why I'm out here on Gunner Trail right now. That's why I've been spending time out here, but it was so fun, you know, before forward facing sonar and, it's just a weird time, man. It's different. It, it I don't is. know what the answer is. I don't know what I the future know. holds. Yeah. Well, I actually so, oh, it's I'm so thankful to to be, you know, to have done some things before it all. That's for sure. No no doubt, man. And I it's so funny. I, I have in my notes right here. If I could zoom my camera in on my notepad, it would be really funny because and actually before I brought you on, I talked about this as well that it is changing, and we were in, and I said it just hit me, honestly, on the ABT stage yesterday at Lake Jordan, watching these really, really young kids. And I'm talking about 17, 18-year-olds in the top 10 beating a Mark McKegg and Tim Hurst, hanging right. with Kobe Carden and Chris Rutland that will beat your teeth in on the Coosa Freaking River. Legends, yes, dude. right? Like <laughs> legends. And, and look, they're still in the top 10. And, but, but you talk to them, and they're like, yeah, I'm mixing it in now. And then you and they they catch like three on a swim jig and two big spots doing that right and you're going right. whoa I never thought I would see the day and then you've got these young guys that uh, that are just so dialed on it but but I actually but it, it has hit me though and I think yesterday like driving home last night I thought about it so much from the MPFL uh, at Logan which we were. It was one. Will Harkins won at Square Bill, and he's fantastic with forward face. And we saw that last year. He's twenty two years old, but he's very versatile. And he won at Square Bill, and, he won at Square Bill and, yeah, and he's a yeah. and he's a forward facing guy. We he had four top tens with us last year. Wins it on that's a Square awesome. Bill. Uh, but then the the young man we had another young man, Brock Bela. He's also in his early twenties. Uh, finished second live scope, and so we kind of had a little bit of everything going on there. That's cool. It's very, That's yeah. Cool. I that, like that. that I, yeah, look, it did my old man heart good to see some red <laughs> red crankbaits hanging out of fish's mouth, getting scooped on the side. Like, I was good with that. I'm not trying to be anti-forward facing because I'm not. I enjoy using it. I do. Uh, I get where the fan base is at with it. I, I, I watch hours of it during MPFL. I get it. I understand. 100%. I get 100%. it. Uh, but I actually did have in my notes here, 
you're 37 now. I was talking to Justin Atkins about this this week, too. You guys were the young guns. You just mentioned Polony. Y'all were the young guns that were, like, taking this thing by storm. Everybody's like, these young punks, here they are, just taking all of our damn money, these young punks. And now, dude, you multiply that by a thousand. I feel, I feel like the sport has gotten so much younger, right? Like, it just has. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody could argue that. No. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, I weighed in at the Toyota Championship. I'm in the bag line, and I'm like, man, like, I've been hearing about, you know, standing around bag lines feeling like you're one of the older guys. I'm like, <laughs> I sure do feel like I'm one of the older guys, you know. But my thought process, too, man, is like, you know, these young guys, they have, like, I, I'm friends with some of these younger guys, you know, yeah. in their mid-20s and stuff. And I don't want to be the older guy that's like, oh, screw these young guys, right. blah, 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 you know, like, and be bitter about it or anything because they have a different approach and a different mindset. And there's things to learn from the way that they think about fishing, uh, you know, compared to the way that I've always thought about it. So I love balancing thoughts and ideas, you know, about how to approach things and and what the fish might be doing and, uh, you know, and all of that because they – they're still knowledgeable. They're just, you know, they're knowledgeable. I feel like in a different way, like, you know, before it was all about experience. I remember yes. being younger, like looking like, okay, Ayler's this age, Aaron, Aaron Martin's is this age, Skeet's this age. Like I had it all dialed out, dude. Like you have to be in your late thirties, you know, maybe 40 for your prime for fishing. And I was always looking forward to that, you know, like I was having fun, through the process but i'm like i'm gonna be my bet like my best years are still they're ahead. coming yeah they're coming once i go to these lakes 17 times like these guys for sure dude, yeah for sure and now that <laughs> it kind of wiped all that yes like, that's that's gone dude yes. so i don't but i don't want to sit there and be like you know oh my best days are behind me and not embrace this and not learn from you know what they have because i feel like they're still you know, think about what Brandon knows, right? Like, oh dude my is, goodness. he's always yes. been on another level. Um, and his knowledge, you know, embraced with the new technology. Like, I feel like that's still super dangerous. Very dangerous. So yes. I want to win as badly as ever. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to spend the time and it's, you know, it's tougher with two kids now for sure. And I'm in this contemplating stage with my wife of having three or not. I'm like, I have to learn forward facing <laughs> sonar better before we have number three. But dude, think about this. So, if you have a third it kid. Takes so much time, dude. Um, <laughs> so I told her, I'm like, maybe we should wait like a year. I feel, I'll feel better but after this year. If you have so, a third kid, they can might help go for you. Three next year, dude. They can help you learn even more about if I, forward facing. If I get facing. better at forward facing sonar, all right, baby, we're, we're go now. Full send on the third. <laughs> My 13 year old shows me more about it than I know about it. He's like, dad, I saw this on YouTube and he's over here pushing. He's like, this is the settings we need. And he's like, there's three right over there, dad. And he's bombing his Demiki over there. I'm like, what is happening? And, like, oh, yeah. and my 16 year old is like me. And he's like, we caught more fish without this stupid thing. Let's go to the bank and skip those docks, dad. And I'm like, and they just fight all day long about uh, it's so which fun is best. to still do that though. Dude, you know, like I get yes. that. And, and this yes. fall at Gunnersville, before it was, you know, got real cold and stuff. Like I spent a lot of time throwing a buzz bait, yes, sir. chasing those shallow fish. And man, that was just like, it was just refreshing, you know, it was fun. And, uh, so I hope we can still find tournaments where, you know, that'll happen. And, and some of that stuff can go down. I think a lot of it, dude, I feel like a lot of it is scheduling. Right. And like with yep. you saying the NPFL yep. at Logan Martin, like, yeah, it's winter but it was still one square building. Yep, so that's right. Scheduling is a big part of it for sure. No doubt. And you guys starting very early in the year this year, I mean, Toledo was inevitable to me that it was going to be right, that, right. right? Like it just, but, but to me also, it's very cool to see, uh, cause I growing up and I'm sure you're the same way, uh, back in the day, like, cause we're, we're not, I'm, I'm 40 on the dots. So I'm not too, too far North of you there. We grew up watching the same things, Bassmaster Wise and, and you know, keeping up with the FLW Tour. But in the dead winter of winter, which I consider late January, when you guys at Toledo been the dead of winter, basically, they had had a big, you know, polar vortex come through there just like we did here. You thought back then it was like, oh, well, 
we don't really bass fish in the winter. And if you do, it's a jig and spoon and 12 pound monofilament under your flasher. And, you know, oh, yeah. and, and you just thought that way or, oh, the East Tennessee guys are throwing the float and fly and bass really are lethargic, right? They don't really do anything. And, and what's so cool for me in this new age is what we've seen in the Texas lakes, like the ivies and all that is these giant bass love to feed a this time of year. We did not know that necessarily. And mm-hmm. there are massive groups of them that are ferocious. If you find them in very oh, cold yeah. water, like we have learned so much through forward facing as well. So it's like a give and take. Yeah, it is dude. And that's to me. So that's still the coolest part about forward facing sonar is not watching the fish even come up and eat the bait. It's, it's watching and learning their characteristics, mm-hmm. you know, and seeing how they act and just like, man, I've been doing this this long and I had no idea that they did this. Like, that's crazy to me. Or I had no idea that they would run from this bait like they do or attack this one like they do, you know? So just learning their personality is to me, that's the coolest part about forward facing for sure. Uh, I, I got to admit, dude, like after a week of doing it, I'm like, okay like i need to go skip a dock or you know catch one <laughs> on my Nico rig or something like just to just to get you know just to get my head up heck i've been doing freaking neck exercises dude just to uh not get tech tech you know that's like a real tech thing neck. these people are gonna all have straight necks and everything oh yeah these curved necks so. these kids are gonna look like an s i think it's a straight neck you don't want you want a curved neck you don't want straight but yeah you, you don't want straight neck. lean down I, t- I was talking to my chiropractor about it and uh <laughs> anyway so like people out there if you're doing this a bunch you want to like roll a towel up and lay on it <laughs> under your neck or get one of these little That's foam rollers like i got it definitely makes a difference you heard it here folks low budget live exclusive <laughs> justin lucas is doing neck exercises Chiro- because chiropractor <laughs> lucas over here <laughs> he will get you a line he's going to open a shop in his spare time over there on the shores of gunnersville yeah. go get your tech neck worked out <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> Dude, it's hilarious. I'm gonna start selling them on Tackle Warehouse, dude. Foam rollers for everybody. Go back. check with tacklewarehouse.com. The foam roller, the the J Luke foam roller. Oh, uh, there's a new YouTube video right is, there. Bro. Is Berkeley gonna Berkeley will put that out? Get Berkeley to call the boys. Tell them, hey, yeah. we need the uh, power bait and the, the neck Max roller. Scent neck roller. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Uh, how far are we away from somebody like a, a Garmin or a Lawrence or whoever doing these Apple like goggles, right? And then you don't, oh, have, and then you don't have to bend over. Now you might get you might get you know T boned in a boat lane or something, but <laughs> you'll never have to look again. I right? hope not, man. I hope <laughs> Bro, don't, don't even think. Day. I hope I'm done by the day. That I, I mean, just think like you can sit in the driver's seat and just freaking cast around. Like, you don't have to. You don't have oh, to do anything. Freak. <laughs> Man, we joke, but like you said, in the last four years, we have hit the gas pedal. We just have. We have gone. Power poles were an an incredible, true game changer in bass fishing. We know that. Spot locking trolling motors took it even further because when you got off the bank and you didn't, you couldn't use the power poles. Whether you're ledge fishing, you're doing whatever. Like it changed everything immediately. Yeah. How we could yeah. approach you know, offshore fishing, how we could approach so many different things. Those were legitimate game changers to your point. Uh, and I have, this is something that, that I think Atkins and I talked about mapping for me was that aha moment, uh, kind of like people are having with forward facing where I, I, I remember fishing, uh, an Everstart on Pickwick. And it was right after I was out of college, got a job and I didn't have as much time to practice, but stayed, you know, pretty much, in tune with what was going on pickwick and wilson and i had some offshore places on wilson that i'd fished my entire life that i'd found with the paper map the whole nine and i did not know that navionics had happened i did not know that like i was Mm. i was very green and i rolled up and i'll never forget i got to practice like a day and a half and i went to check one of my best places that i'd never seen anybody and there were three boats from out of state (laughs) oh geez sitting on it and and I and I'll never forget calling my dad and I'm like, man, some locals help these guys, which happens too, obviously. But I'm like, dude, something's going on. And yeah. I was sitting with a guy from North Carolina in the lock the first day, and I'd seen him out there. And I said, man, if you don't mind me asking, how do you know about that place over there? And he goes, oh, 
right here. And he goes, beep, boop, 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 boop. It starts going to his map. And I went, I just hung my head. I was like, that changes everything. Uh-oh. That changes it everything. Does. Right there. And Randy Haynes, actually, that was when Randy Haynes burst on the scene. That was the first one he won. And he blew it out. And he was combining that, of course, with side imaging. He was very proficient with it. Also with a ton of local knowledge go, going in, right, to know where to look for him. But that was kind of the Randy Haynes show. And I had a miserable event, but it got in my head so bad. But that was that first aha. I was 22 years old. That was the first aha moment of, uh-oh, things yeah. are progressing, and you better get on board. Because, I, like, dude, I wasn't far removed from just getting side imaging for the first time. Like, I, yeah. I, I around that time frame, Gagley already showed it to me for the first time ever, and he was one of, like, three or four people that had it. Uh, and he was, he was – he, I remember him calling me, and it was like – Somebody telling you about a rocket ship they saw in the 1930s, oh, you know? I, I remember hearing about yeah. it for the first time, yeah. too, and it was like, what? No way. And then you go out <laughs> there and look, and you're like, I can't even tell what it no, is. No, it all looks you know? the same like, to me. But that slowly took off, you know? And no I feel doubt. like that's kind of like Ford. Not, not to interrupt you. But no, like, you're good, buddy. Christy won at St. Clair a few years ago, you remember, mm-hmm. like – like I think 18 or 19 or, or 16 or 17, somewhere in there. I remember they were just panoptic. What was it called? Back just then? panoptics. Panoptics, just panoptics. Yep. The original. Yeah. So like, I remember him saying, I'm throwing at fish. I can see in front. And I think he said he caught a lot of drum or, you know, all kinds of other stuff, but was catching bass mixed in there. And I'm like, hmm, you know, there's, <laughs> something to that like he may not can see far enough yet but i didn't think all of a sudden like man we hit 2020 and it was like gangbusters after that you know but same thing with side imaging like when it first came out it was kind of like you couldn't tell what anything was it was eh. but then you know as the imaging got better it was like oh okay like I really can see here now. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, I can I can ride for two days on a body of water I've never been to and find everything exactly. <laughs> in an area like yeah. it, it did. But that that uh, you can imagine though for some of the some of the guys that are late to this this forward facing party, and and I said this to David Fritz on this very show not long ago because he was kind of complaining about it, and I said. Uh, that was why he retired from bass. And of course he he's fishing MPFL and he had a great event cranking down at Logan Martin. He got a check. Tommy yep. Biffle got a check. It was cool to see the old school guys in the mix for Heck sure. Yeah. Uh, in the, in a muddy water derb, you know, it was, it was awesome. But, but I, I made the comparison to David. I said, well, what if, I mean, you got to think back. I said, when people saw you off the bank, and they were beating the banks in the Bassmaster Classic and the in the July Classics, and all of a sudden, this guy named David Fritz comes along in 1993, and he's behind them, <laughs> looking like he's throwing in the abyss. You're right, and he's sacking them up. They all wanted to tar and feather you, David. Right? You know what yeah. I mean? It was like that yeah. was their aha moment. I talked to uh, Shaw Grigsby, told me one of the coolest stories the East Tennessee Fishing Show. He was asking me where I was headed next. It was MPFL, Logan Martin. And he goes, you know, I finished second there in the Classic to David Fritz. And I'd actually forgotten that he was second in the 93 Classic. And he said, but I want to tell you a quick story. He said, you can use this on MPFL Live. He said, on the final day, I'm flipping this stretch of docks and some bank grass. And he said, David idled by two or three different times. And he said, in my mind, and he said, I even told my camera guy, he must want, he must be fishing this stretch too, and I just haven't seen him. He wants to get in here, I guess. No. When Shaw goes back to watch the television show later, there was a stump, a singular offshore stump right behind where Shaw was at. David didn't want him to see him fishing it. Wanted to wait until oh, he geez. left, and Fritz rolled in on the final day and caught his biggest bass, one over six, off of that isolated stump on a crankbait wow. and Shaw said I had no clue it was there I wouldn't have known how to fish it anyways but he said it rocked my world knowing, oh, yeah. knowing that happened and that's definitely where we're at with the guys that got super ahead with all this forward facing stuff uh, for sure man I, I think it's it's going to be interesting to see where all of it ends up it's obviously be crazy interesting it, like yeah I don't know if it's going to be good or bad. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. uh, Yeah, the next few years in fishing, man, is going to be, you know, 
I, who knows? But I'm I'm along for the ride. Yeah, you're. I'm, I'm pretty much all. In I was gonna say you're in the thick of it, dude. And and, it takes. and and I won't we'll say do. you're just as competitive as you've ever been. You're, you're. I mean, dude, you're one of those guys that I've said it to you before in person. I say it to you on here as well. Like you're one of my favorite followers on social media. You always have been. You stay on the water. You're constantly trying to educate. You are that guy uh that that's just the consummate professional to me and i've loved over the years we've talked about this I some too that, well, thank you you're welcome dude you you bust your ass um you're an incredible you're an incredible dad family man but seeing and dude seeing you with your kids like it just make it it's the same with like atkins for me uh just seeing you guys uh you know with these young families getting them on the water like, it's so awesome man um to see you passing that on now and, and just, I'm just, I'm glad they like it. Right. Like, yeah. I don't want to force it on them, but when my kids, at, when my six year old asks to go fishing, I'm like, dude, like, that melts my heart. No you know? doubt, like, dude. This is so cool. I hope he keeps asking forever, you know, cause it, it just, uh, my, my best memories growing up are fishing with my grandpa yeah. and uh, my grip and he's Cooper's great grandpa. He's still yeah. alive. He's 86 yeah. now, but, uh, I just want to be able to, you know, soak up all that time with them and, you know, enjoy it. And there's nothing better than being on the water with somebody you really enjoy spending time with at the end of the day, that, that is something really special. So. Well, it's what, it, what got us all hooked, right. Was that 100%. those core memories and you hope that that's, that's my hope every day, whether it's just a normal day around here, right? Like I want my kids to enjoy, enjoy their lives and, and, and chase whatever they're passionate about. But there is something and we all say as parents, well, I don't want to like cram it down their throat. You know, if they don't want to do it, I'm not going to force them to do it, but there is something beautiful about, um, them wanting to pursue or be a part of what you've got going on. And, and my boys are the same. Uh, they, they absolutely love being on the water, being in the outdoors. My youngest though, Justin, and, and I will tell you this as a warning, my youngest, who is 13 years old, Ryder Duncan, is now a swim bait obsessed child. And uh -oh. a, a, yes, and uh, and the low lifers listening are probably rolling their eyes or and they're like, yeah, we've heard this story. <laughs> but he is he, he truly, dude, he's like, we go in a tackle store and he's over at the bull sheds and he's over at the Chad sheds and he's over at, and he's like, hey, dad, I need one of these. And I'm, like, well, start some yards, I'm like, bud, dude. yeah, here's a weed eater. <laughs> um, get after it because uh, but but a, a good friend of mine, Bo Spire from Florence, Alabama, shout out to Bo, ruined my son at Christmas this year. Bo and I, he's a big swim bait nut. That's all he does. And he and I had been in the boat together one day in December, and I was telling him about Ryder's obsession. He's like, well, you let that boy do it then. That's what he needs to do. And he's like, give me a hard time. And I'm like, Bo, this is a very expensive habit. I've bought him some inexpensive stuff, and I'll let him throw it on my gear, but, like, we're not there yet. And Bo sent a box to our house. Uh, and Bo has, you name it, it's scary, actually, how much tackle he has. But he sent a cardboard box to the house, and it said, the Duncan boys on top. And there was a handwritten note that said, keep away from your dad. Merry Christmas, Bo. And <laughs> it, dude, awesome. and it was all these, like you name it glides in there. Uh, there were a couple that dad put away because they were, juice and uh those my two turd heads don't need the to, dad tax yeah they were the dad yeah 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 the dad tax those went right to the uh to the shop uh next to the express for sure but but yeah i will warn you there it does get expensive my 13 year old likes forward facing and he loves uh he loves swim baits he's constantly watching youtube videos on glide baits and dad we need this rod and we need this reel and we've got to do this and i and he doesn't understand yet that you may go weeks without a bite doing that also but he's okay with it too the days we go and we don't catch one on it he just likes throwing the stupid things like whatever man which is cool well, that's because, what it takes that's no awesome doubt. i yeah. think that's great it is I mean, cool think about how many other things he could be obsessed no with. doubt dude this day and age that's right and the kids obsessed with swim baits i mean I'm all, no I'm doubt all man. man no cool. no doubt and i listen and i and i say all that of course joking but I, because i will buy every swim bait known to man if it means he gets, in the, right. he gets in the boat with me you know we us dads we turn into uh we're pushovers when it comes to that but the coolest thing though we talk about this youth movement and a lot of you'll see the keyboard commenters all the time of you know it's like the video games and they're da 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 uh, it's bad for everything um it, and and i get that point of view i guess but 
Ryder and I fished a little tournament in November, and we were live scoping, and we were catching them every cast. Uh, a lot of small fish, but we end up coming in fifth, getting a little money. And but as we are catching these fish, Eric, and he is just giggling. Like I had the GoPro around, like he's gigging, giggling. It's twenty degrees. We had to get up at three thirty in the morning to drive an hour and a half to this tournament, and we're freezing to death catching them every cast on the school we found. And I said, "Well, I guess you like this because it's like a video game." And I never did clip this, and I should have. And he goes, "Dad, this is so much better than a video game." Dude, and and and, it, man, and, and cool. dude, and it just it hit me. I'm like, if this is like you're saying with the swim baits, if this is what gets him standing on this front deck next to me, then I am all for this. Wherever this yes. is headed, I'm all for this. If this is what now he look, he loves throwing a chatterbait. He loves fishing die like whatever. He just likes catching bass. He'll he'll go throw a dang chopo all day long and wait on a couple bites. Like he's he's That's good. That's what with, I'm talking about. Yeah, oh no, dude, he's good with whatever. But he likes he does like to tinker with with the forward facing stuff. And uh, and I'm like, you know what? It might not be all bad. And for me, being an older guy in this industry now, and and being around it since I was 12, and I stand on that Alabama bass trail stage, and I see these families in the audience holding up their iPhones to take pictures and video of their 17 and 18 year olds that are fixing away a bag in <laughs> against these legends and i'm going this is the future of our sport this is yeah. the future and our sport dies if we don't have new blood so we can't be gatekeepers essentially against new things and we have to let the dust settle where it will and look if things need to be regulated at some point i do think the states may do that you know what i mean like if we show that it is it is to, in my opinion, negatively impacting fisheries, then I think that's where the state level would have to step in and say, all right, you can't do this anymore, whatever. But would you say you live on a lake that takes a savage beating, Justin Lucas, a savage beating on a daily basis from hammers. He won in the BFL yesterday. So but yeah, it's, yes. You know, 31, 200 boats out here now. No doubt. And it takes a savage beating and kicks them out year after year after year. But would you say you travel all over the country? And I know it's getting tougher at times. I think our fisheries, from a weight perspective, are the best they've ever been as a whole. Yeah, I mean, based off my opinion, I would say, yeah, I mean, the weights are insane. And I mean, definitely part of it is us being able to target fish. That, no doubt, no doubt. Know, <clears throat> that is certainly uh, certainly a big part of it is targeting these suspended fish that have never been mm -hmm. able to be, you know, targeted and caught effectively and efficiently right. before. Um, but, and that's where I want to, you know, I'm with you. Like, I don't know where it's going to go. It's not my, I'm not the one to make the decision. But, you know, who's to say, hey, maybe just these states starting to take more funds and, you know, planting more fish isn't a, a good answer. I don't know what the answer is. Right, I don't, yeah. Um, but there's certainly a lot of pressure on all the bodies of water, more so it feels like than ever before, you know, Definitely. high school, college, all the tournaments. So maybe, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I'm always, I always fall back to, you know, I've, I feel like Texas has always done a good job. Their lakes just keep pumping them out. They get more <laughs> pressure than anywhere. No doubt. And they seem to do a great job at, you know, managing it and putting new fish in there and, I don't know, man. I, I could be wrong, but at least I, I love seeing fish getting, you know, planted into lakes and everything. And I think that does make a difference. Oh, I, I would and love grass, to... you know, oh, grass. Yeah. like that's the yes. thing with Gunnersville, dude, is like they don't really kill the grass here. They can't kill it. There's eelgrass, hydrilla, milfoil, and it just, it, it like, it keeps the place super healthy, you know, even though these fish can be targeted. There's hundreds of thousands that can't be. In That's the grass, right. they're, they're hiding living and eating bluegill, and mm -hmm. you can't, you know. So, I don't know, man. I get everybody's side. I'll say yeah. that. Yeah, like, me I too. Read a lot me of too. comments. I get yeah. everything, and I, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. Yeah. Other than it's changed. It's changed. Yes, that's the that's the only that's the only thing we can prove right now is that it's changed. Now, whether that's for the good or the bad, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Time will tell. But uh, like you said, it'll be an interesting few years ahead you know, and seeing what happens.
No, no doubt about it. I actually uh, was talking to Trip Weldon. Was at the Alabama Bash Trail weigh in yesterday. Shout How's out to Trip. He's doing great, man. He was doing great. It was so good cool. to see him. I'm such a Trip Weldon fan, and uh, uh, and and getting to see him. He's side stage while I'm trying to MC, and I'm like, this is kind of intimidating. Can you please not be right here, Mr. <laughs> Weldon? Because I was just like, you know, really on my p's and q's, trying to be. Uh, but we were talking about just how much has changed. And then you saw like the weights that that the Coosa river kicked out yesterday for us was just insane. Like 17 pounds didn't even get you in the, you know, barely got you an attaboy in the top 10 there um, <laughs> at Lake Jordan, 225 boats on that little lake, 14 pounds. Little lake. It is a little lake, you know, comparatively speaking and 14 pounds got you in 40th and then 13 pounds goes down to like 75th or something. I mean, dude, they dude, ro- that's impressive, rocked man. them yesterday, that's but, impressive. and and look, to be fair on stage, you had the, if you're not scoping, you're hoping guys. And you had, when I'm interviewing <laughs> them and you had just as many, like swimming a jig, throwing a buzz, but you know, there was, it was kind of split, right? Like there was a lot of just good old bass fishing going on, but uh, but it was interesting hearing Trip's perspective a little bit on you know how things are progressing and and changing and and I I'd say I would bet that he's glad that he doesn't have to be in the middle of those conversations. He's from probably a time, very from a time, much enjoying yeah, life right yeah, now, sitting yes. back and letting all this unfold, he not looked, having to deal with it. Yeah, he gets on Facebook, he's having his morning coffee, and he gets on an MLF post or Bassmaster post or MPFL, and he's like <laughs> just sips his coffee, puts it back down, and then looks out at Lake Jordan. At his back door, he's like, exactly. glad I'm not in the middle of that, buddy. Um, <laughs> dude, I want to I want to end with this today. Two two things. First of all, did you know if you Google your name, because I'm always like updating my stat lines that I've got on guests and things. Did you know if you Google your name that you spent six seasons in the NFL, you're a 47 year old former pro American football player? Did you know that? Have you, you ever been told that? that? <laughs> It, but but when when you click the like when it the search finishes it's got your picture and then let's Wikipedia playing the NFL for a few years. <laughs> I guess I missed that. I guess I missed that. <laughs> I remember kidding. National Guard Lucas, but I don't remember. Well, I remember dude, I National so Guard many Lucas. People ask me about that. Okay, I'm like, look at me, dude. My dad is five six. I'm five nine. That's why I started fishing. Well, okay, like, so hey, I'm gonna pull I this. I knew I didn't have a prayer. I'm going to pull this back up right now because I got to read this stat line real quick on this guy. So it, this I played the, for the Cardinals. You played like, for come on. yes, the They're Cardinals. Be on a better team than the Cardinals. <laughs> the Cardinals and the St. Louis Rams. Uh, you appeared in 65 NFL games, only eight as a starter. So you did ride the bench a little bit. It's okay, <laughs> but but the reason you did, Justin, is because you're only five eight. You're listed at five eight from Victoria, Texas. Shout out to your parents, Felicia and James Lucas. But truly, wrong. <laughs> your Google page, I'll send you a picture of this because it's nothing but your fishing. Like to the left of this Wikipedia, it is nothing but you with weigh-in bags, you holding up small mouth, videos of That's you from hilarious. major, and then uh, under it, it says about. Justin Ashley Lucas is a former professional American football player who played cornerback for six seasons for the Arizona Cardinals and St. Louis Rams. <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing. But yeah, oh, I figured so you, far from the truth. So far, it's all good. But right. it scared Whatever. me for a second. I was like, 47? Justin's not 47. But I, because I, my eyes went right to that before it went to the professional fo- football. But uh, but you also okay. played. Sorry, at, but not true. Sorry. <laughs> Abil- <laughs> you did play at Abilene Christian College in 97 and 98. So those are good years. Back to run it back, 1998. Uh, no, I want to I end with this because you've always, you've been one of the most, uh, You've been one of the guys that no matter what I threw out there, you're always like, hey, man, good point, or hey, man, you're wrong. Hey, man, like we've had some great conversations over the years, and I've always appreciated and respect the heck out of you. But where are we at? Where are you at, Justin Lucas, right now with Major League Fishing as a whole? Uh, and I know it's a loaded question, but I'm saying Bass Pro Tour, like where are you at? Because, look, I can sit here and look at a camera and go, oh, this is bad, this is good, this is this, this is that. We see there are things going on, right? There are lots of changes, but where are you at? Are you to the, man, I'm just making a living. This is where I'm at. This is my platform. Do you applaud the changes? Because you and I have not got to talk about, you know, the field cutting down. Like what are your thoughts? Oh, yeah, it's loaded question. Loaded for sure, but, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean – Dude, I obviously hate to see, I hate to see this, some of these changes. I don't agree with everything MLF has done. Do I have fun fishing over there? Is it a good time? Is it intense as 
Peck, yes, like all of that stuff is, you know, is good and is fun for me. And I'm, and I'm making a living, you know, and no doubt. Uh, I haven't had any sponsors, you know, ever ask me or tell me that, Hey, we're going to cut you and you need to go back or we're going to cut you or anything like that. So, uh, for now, I guess I just keep doing, you know, what I'm doing. And I mean, it's, you know, it, it sucks, man. I mean, there's just, there's changes all across the board. I felt like at first it was, you know, at first it was good. Everybody got essentially when the big change happened, everybody got pay raises, you know, no right doubt. away. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, payouts went up, all that stuff. And then, and then things changed. And, you know, MLF has not been perfect. Um, you know, I don't feel like bass has been perfect. Uh, I would I agree. To a bunch of guys, you know, that fish bass too. Of course. I don't know, man. I just, I'm at this point where I have respect for both leagues. I'm thankful to have a spot to fish. Uh, I really just want to go have fun and try and win tournaments, you know? Yeah. And, uh, man, I mean, the other thing too is Jacob Wheeler is obviously insanely good. Jeez. Dustin Connell, we have some Mountain Jones juniors, you know, so oh, we dang. still have some really, really good young fishermen over here. And, you know, the competition's as good as it's ever been. And Stout. I'm like, I want to, I want to be able to beat these guys. I want to, I want to win these tournaments. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, when you can't discount man. Wheeler and Ott and Edwin and little Alton and Dustin and Mark Danny. I mean, listen, the talent, the talent level is there, right? I mean, and for it's sure. Eric Bass too. A million know, percent. Dude. They, Yes, they they're have insane catch. talent. Yes. There's guys coming up, all the young guys through the opens and stuff. Yes. Uh Milliken getting in over so there. So like, crazy. The talent is crazy at, at both places. So like I said, I you know, I'm thankful to have a place to fish. I I feel for you know the guys that are gonna be affected by the changes. Mm -hmm. And I was on that board the first year, you know, like this angler board and mm -hmm. everything. And I was on it in 2019. I got off in 2020. I'm like, I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to be making any decisions over here. Uh, it's not my spot. So yeah. ever since then, I've just kind of sat back and, you know, tried to have, tried to enjoy it. And man, my check cashing percentage went way up and, you know, the, the number of phone calls I had to be on and talk about things, politics stuff all went way down. So I get it. I get why people can be mad at MLF and all that. Um, but at the end of the day, there are some good things they do too. So I agree. Uh, you know, that that's where I'm at is it's not all bad. Um, would I love to see there be one league and, you know, be 150 pros? Yeah, I would. I would love to see that. Will we see but that ever? There's too many. You know, we got good guys on MPFL. We got good guys at bass pro tour great guys at bass like you know there's it's weird because it's like there's more than 150 good good fish i would agree like, there's 200 you know then and people keep paying so you know i heard i think watson said it before everybody's like a drug addict like, <laughs> yeah you're right like we just keep yeah. paying he for said the fix. and <laughs> That's uh it. you know it is what it is yeah well and, and I, think, I don't have the answer dude nah. I know, and i don't have the money to change things so that's right he, he who has the money tends to make the rules, right? Like that's, that tends to be how the, the world works. And, and, and look, there's a lot of smart people involved. My, my biggest thing or biggest concern is if, because look, people think, oh, it's going away. It's doing this, it's doing that. You, you see the, you know, the kind of the fan chatter and like, that would not be good. Right, obviously, for someone like yourself, like that's where you're making. Oh your yeah, living. I would, like that it wouldn't, wouldn't be good for me. Like that no, wouldn't be no. good at all. It wouldn't be good for so many. And I think for that brand, especially attached to the FLW, where your roots were, you know, so deep there as well, it's like it would be it would be a terrible thing to see that happen. So I, I just hope that whatever changes they make going forward are good for the anglers and good for the health of the organization to keep it going. Because if it was to just completely, because listen, I, I work working for MPFL. Like this game is not easy from an organizational standpoint. Like I know I can Heck throw no. crit criticism out there, like whether it's Bass, MLF, MPFL, whoever, Alabama Bass Trail that I'm working with, like the things these tournament organizations go through, 
It's a lot too. Trying to put, yep. I mean, like I, I'm, I get to see it from all angles now, and it really has changed my perspective on a lot of things in the last couple of years in particular. But so, so they, they do take the bumps, but at the same time, like decisions are not easy, uh, especially big decisions are not easy. And especially in a time frame where you have somebody like myself or many others that like to jump on the bandwagon of they're going to give their opinion about it. And we live in that constant content world where, Man, people and they people love to comment and people love to stir stir the pot. That's for sure. So it's, it's fun. I like to read them all. You know, I, 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 <laughs> I, I do too. Yeah, I, I do too. Listen to everything. Yeah. And, you know, I see everything, and I mean, it is entertaining. But you know, it's also at the end of the day, I'm not the business guy. Like that's you're right. saying, there is a lot of business decisions made. I know how to fish, and that's right. After after being on that angler board, I'm like. I don't want to be any part of this. Like, I just, I just want to fish. I want to try and win tournaments. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I make a living because of sponsorships. So my focus, you know, has always really been, you know, ever since I started having success and and getting some great sponsors is keeping them happy. Because at the end of the day, I have to put food on my family's table too. And every, Mm -hmm. everybody does. So I'm like, we all have to make decisions that, you know, I can't just go off and make a crazy decision that's going to put my family in, you know, financial jeopardy or risk or anything like that. So, you know, if the world worked that way, there would probably be some pretty cool outcomes, but we have to make a living. You know, I, I've got to make a living for my family. So family comes number one and I make my business decisions, you know, based on that. I, lo- I love that, man. As you should, as you should. I, I uh, well, I applaud you, dude. You, uh, you're, you're a hell of a guy. I'm proud to know you. I'm proud that we got to do this again. And one of these days, we talked about it in the off season. I do want to do an in-person Justin Lucas LBL because I think you and I would talk for a very long time. Those are more fun for me most of the time than the phone interviews as well. But uh, You might even convince me to have an adult beverage if we do that. Dude, let's, that let's might, do that. That would be a good time. Let's do, we, we will do that. We're gonna, we'll, we will figure out a time. Uh, but I can't, I can't thank you enough for taking time out. I know you got a, just a few hours today to get out on the water, and uh, I appreciate you spending some time with me and the low lifers. Heck yeah, man. When's your guys' next NPFL? We go uh, the championship from last year down in Amistad, one of those uh, deep clear Sweet. ponds. Yeah, we're going to uh, first week of March, and then we got a break all the way till May. So they're real spaced out this year. And, uh, well, but, you guys did a, you guys did a cool job on the schedule. I like that a lot. It's so different, I'll be, right? I'll be keeping up. And yeah. Seeing what's going on over there for sure. Well, I, I appreciate that, man. It's uh, we have a lot of fun to do. We've got a stacked house over there this year. It's yeah, got, yeah. it's fun. It's fun. It's uh, first event was just such a great time. And listen, I got to commentate David Fritz, dude. You know what? Twelve year old me was just I was freaking out. I was talking. I was watching David Fritz throw a crankbait on live, sitting down, and I'm getting to call the call the shots. It was it was pretty damn awesome. That's awesome, dude. Very cool. Very, very cool day. But uh, good luck, man. Santee, be safe. And uh, hopefully yes, we'll get to see you yeah, all those trophies. I uh, got the same prop and lower unit on by the end of the week. That's the goal. <laughs> that and, you know, try and win. But that, that's goal number one. Fingers crossed, man. I really appreciate it. Justin Lucas, everybody. Thank you, dude. Thank you. See you. Oh, cut him off a little bit short there. Hit the button. Hit the button. Uh, what a dude, what a dude right there. Justin Lucas, such an awesome angler, awesome individual. Appreciate him joining us. Appreciate each and every one of you joining me each and every week. We are a little over a month away from that Bassmaster Classic in Tulsa, Oak, La Homa. Downtown Tulsa is where it's going down Saturday night. Let's look at an exact date. Let's look, shall we? We shall. Let's pull up the calendar here. Let's do a proper promotional piece here. On the 23rd of March, around 7 p.m., the Hunt Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma, unless something changes, that's where we're at, the Hunt Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I am working on a fun night for everybody that can be there. Low Budget Live, 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 live. That is where it is going down. We're going to be making some fun announcements that night. We're going to do a live podcast. We're going to play music. I have got a band put together, okay? Some very special guests, very special guests. Maybe even some uh, Oklahoma brethren of mine will be joining us that night. It is not a gigantic place, so you're going to want to get there early and stay late. 
low budget live, 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 live at the Hunt Club, March 23rd. We're also going to do a live podcast, the Bassmaster Classic and the Express Boats booth on the 23rd, Saturday afternoon as well. Be there, be square, everybody. I'll be roaming around the Classic. Hope to see everybody there. And I'm going to take you out with some Biloxi Blues. Thank y'all so much for everything. Again, you low lifers, my life is a wild ride. I'm forever grateful for it. Entering year seven here of Low Budget Live and uh, look to doing seven or 70 more of it. You know, how, however much of this we can talk about, let's do it. And uh, I appreciate every single one of you. Take you out with some Biloxi and I'll see y'all next week. Sweet. Town to Tupelo, I never could make it last. Spanish moss and Civil War ghosts, well, I'm gonna leave them in the past. Any direction, Lord, I'll be fine, it don't matter, east or west. North, south, wherever the wind blows, I'm leaving those burdens at rest. This highway, it does not know my name, and I don't care, no, I don't care. Heading my way for another place, and I got three good tires and a spare. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get there.